welcome to our Mastering Virtual Career Fairs sessions. Today we're going to cover ways in which you can prepare for career fairs, which really is not that different from a traditional career fair, except for the ways in which you'll be engaging with employers in not a face-to-face -face capacity. And this afternoon, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Claire Klieger. I'm one of the Senior Associate Directors in Career Services, and I have the pleasure of working with students in the College of Arts and Sciences. One of the fairs that I manage is CareerLink, which is our big catch-all career fair across a range of industries. And I'm going to turn it over now to my colleague, Anne, to introduce herself. Hi, everybody. My name is Anne Dickinson, and I'm an Associate Director also on the college team with Claire. Uh, I managed two fairs in the fall semester. One is the Policy and Government Fair, which will be coming up in September um, later this month, and then also the Nonprofit and Government Fair, which will be later this semester in November. And so there are pictures of us moving right along. What we will cover. So we're gonna cover a lot in just 30 minutes, and we're gonna move through it pretty quickly, but Luckily, you'll have this recording where you can go back and revisit anything that you have questions about. You could also always contact us in Career Services if you needed specific questions answered. So our goal today is to make you feel totally prepared to attend our upcoming virtual career fairs. And in order to feel prepared, you're going to need to know what to expect. So first, we'll dive into the basics of virtual career fairs and how it may be different from standard in-person fairs. We'll also discuss ways that you can proactively get ready for fairs. We actually have a checklist of steps to do beforehand. And then also speaking of ways to prepare, you can do a lot of research, employer research, I should say, um, before the fair so that you can know who the employers are that will be there and you can know a little bit about their organizations ahead of time. This is the best way to give a good first impression. And we have a lot of resources where you can do this research. We'll also discuss some tips and tricks and other best practices to ensure that you have the best experience at the fair. Moving on, I do want to check, um, just talk about before we jump right in, some of the other virtual career opportunities that we're going to have this semester. So obviously there are the career fairs. These are going to be conducted entirely through Handshake, and you'll have two ways to engage with employers, either through group sessions or one-on-one -on -one sessions, and both of those I'll labor, elaborate on in just a bit. Outside of the career fairs, though, many employers actually host information sessions. And these can also be found on Handshake under the Events tab. And these are basically the same thing as group sessions, just not held during the fair or via the Handshake platform. So if you are interested in attending any of these info sessions, you can just search for them on Handshake and register there. And then that way the employer can get in touch with you and provide the link for attendance. On-campus interviewing, you may have heard of, this is OCI. And historically, this would have been when employers traveled to campus to interview students in the career services interviewing suite. And this year, obviously, since everything is virtual, it's going to be different. So employers participating in OCI will be interviewing students via Zoom or another online platform of their choice. And all of these postings will still be through Handshake. Um, and you can identify them by going into the Jobs tab on your Handshake home screen, selecting All Filters identifying whether you're seeking an internship or a full-time job, and then checking that box for interviewing on campus. This is gonna create an aggregate of all of the OCI, OCI jobs on Handshake. And while the first interviews for OCI will start September 22nd, it's important to know that many of the resume submissions are already open now, and they'll close earlier in September, uh, most on or shortly after September 13th and some actually are a little bit earlier than that. And lastly, it's important to know that OCI is not the only way to get hired next summer or after graduation. Many employers will post jobs or internships on Handshake and then just follow up with students directly in order to interview you. So last year we actually had almost 90,000 positions posted. So you will need to use those filters to pare it down a little bit and narrow your search when searching. All right, now talking about our virtual career fairs, which is why you all tuned in. You can see from this picture here that virtual events this year are going to look quite different than our more traditional in-person fairs that we've typically held at the Sheraton or at Houston Hall in the past. However, there are some perks involved for the fairs being virtual this year. Um, for one, you can schedule your session in advance and plan around other commitments that you might have, such as class or other events, and you don't need to spend hours standing in line, often stressed that you might not make it 
to the front of the line before you need to leave for class. So that is a good perk just in terms of scheduling. You'll also know who you'll be meeting with in advance or whose group meetings you'll be attending. So you can spend a good amount of time preparing, researching, and figuring out more information about those specific employers. Also, in-person career fairs are often really loud and sometimes chaotic, and that can feel stressful and sometimes difficult to be your best professional self. So when you're in the comfort of your own home in a quiet space with private one-on-one -on -one meetings, you can talk to an employer without a very distracting environment getting in the way. It's also nice that the group sessions don't have a limited capacity like they would for an in-person event. And this part might seem a little trivial, but you don't need to juggle any of your personal belongings as you're navigating the fair. In years past, students would be possibly jumping in from class, you know, trying to fit in the fair between classes, often carrying large bags, or maybe in the chillier months, they have bulky coats. And since this event is virtual, you won't have to worry about any of that. There are a few things that you can do in advance. First, we've mentioned this a few times, but just be sure to know when those registration dates for each fair open up. I'll show you momentarily where you can find them. This is also important. You'll need to update your Handshake account. This means updating your profile and making it visible to employers. When you're updating your profile, make sure that you check the basics. So just like your graduation date, your school year, your major, uh, your GPA, your work authorization, you just wanna make sure all of those are accurate and up to date. Also be sure to add in any courses, any additional skills, and also any previous work experience if it's not already there. Employers can't view any resumes or other documents that you have stored in Handshake. However, they can use profile fields to find students in order to invite them to their sessions. So you don't want an incomplete profile or out of date profile to keep you from getting discovered by recruiters. You should also update your resume and be able to share it via shareable link, such as a Google Doc. During a one-on-one -on -one chat, an employer may actually ask to see it, in which case, if you send them the link, they can view it right there on the spot. They do have the ability to view your Handshake profile during the one-on-one -on -one meeting, so keep that in mind as well. It's really important to find a quiet and professional space that has really strong internet. Um, these meetings are not long, so even a little bit of screen freezes or internet cutting in and out, it can greatly disrupt your experience. So you wanna avoid any space with spotty internet, also avoid loud noises, anything going on in the background. So you might wanna let your family members or anybody that you might be living with know that you'll need some quiet space while you interact with employers during the fair. Also, just make sure there's nothing in your background that would seem unprofessional or inappropriate. A plain background is totally fine. Um, and avoid looking like a silhouette by not sitting in front of a bright window or any other kind of backlighting. In terms of clothing, wearing a professional outfit is also really important. So maybe put away those comfy clothes and sweats for a few hours and just dress up a little bit for the event. You don't have to wear a full suit or anything like that, but sh you should look professional. So this could be a collared shirt with tie optional, a blouse, a dress, a blazer, anything that looks clean, put together and professional. Not only will you impress employers, but you might feel extra confident in your favorite polished outfit. And lastly, you'll want to review the employers attending and get started on your research. Uh, and this is what Claire will talk about a little bit later. So as I mentioned, you'll be using Handshake a lot during this process. Pretty much 100% of these fairs is all gonna be navigated through Handshake. So starting with registration, you'll want to log into Handshake, select the events tab, and then choose career fairs to get a sense of what fairs are coming up. This will bring up a list of all of the upcoming fairs. And you'll see on the right hand side, there's an option to flag a fair, and that'll put it in your saved folder. So this is an easy way to stay organized and keep track of not just the fairs, but any upcoming events in Handshake. When you do click on the actual fair, you'll be able to see if the registration is open or not. If it's not open, it's going to say currently closed. When it does open, you'll be able to register right there. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see more information about when registration will open so that you can get that date and also additional information about the fair that might be helpful. Once reg registration is open, you can click on to the employer list, select an employer that interests you, and then you should see the options for signups. So for instance, in this case, this employer, Novetta, has options for one-on-one -on -one, uh, sessions. You can see right there where that you can click on that. 
If you click the link, you should then see the availability for each Nevada rep, which you can see on the right-hand side of your screen. Employers are able to bring as many representatives as they would like. So you can actually base your selection on who you sign up for um, off of their job title if you wanted to. Although since the slots are limited, I probably wouldn't get too picky with that and just make sure you sign up for a slot. That said, do not stress out if you don't get the one-on-one -on -one slot that you want or even a one-on-one -on -one slot at all. That's one of the reasons that employers have the group sessions, which have unlimited capacity. Um, so definitely sign up for those if you're interested in an employer. And with that, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Claire, who will get started talking about how we research employers. Appreciate that, Anne. So employer research is a really key part of preparing for career fairs. It's important to figure out which employers you're most interested in speaking to so that you can maximize your time and prepare for the event appropriately. Uh, it's also important to research fairs, be, or research employers rather, because it's one way to set yourself apart as a candidate. Understanding company culture, the types of the positions available, services uh, offered in their particular industry, and even competitors are, can be a way to stand out as a compelling applicant among others that are interacting with these employers. So we're gonna move on now to the ways in which you can use tools uh, as part of your research to work smarter, not harder. There are many tools at your disposal. Handshake is a great place to start. Obviously, organizational websites offer you many pieces of information about a particular organization. Vault guides that we have access to through career services are another great opportunity to provide information. Lippincott Library we'll talk about too. And lastly, Glassdoor, which we won't dig into deeper here, but is worth mentioning. Many of you may be familiar with this resource already. Provides information on things like interview questions, salary, uh, provided by folks who have offered up that information from their own experiences with companies and organizations. So that's worth checking out as well. Starting off with Handshake, we're going to go through the following uh, pieces of information. Uh, filtering for jobs using the career fair features themselves, as well as the career fair profiles of employers, looking at employer pages, and then finally, ways in which you can connect with fellow Penn students or even students beyond Penn to understand better what their experiences may have been like working with those organizations. So starting off with the employers at the fair themselves, you do have the ability even before the fair begins or those registrations open up to see the list of who's registered and you can filter that list of registrations by a variety of categories. Uh, there are several filters that could be really helpful like industry or job type. So if you're an undergrad looking for internships, filtering out which position, which organizations are hiring for those as opposed to full-time jobs. If you're an international student looking for which or employers may be sponsoring or accepting OPT or CPT. Um, however, some categories may be slightly less helpful. For instance, it, it may be very tempting to search by major, which you absolutely can do. But it's worth noting that many employers may not list a, a specific major as part of their recruiting requirements. So while you're welcome to look by that, don't be discouraged if you filter by your major and you don't see a lot of employers who have listed it. Uh, it's because many employers are looking for all majors or just may not have that as a distinguishing feature as, as a category by which they're uh, discriminating in terms of looking for hires. Once you have narrowed down your list of target employers, check out their information, again, within the fair itself. If you can find lots of distinguishing information, including the types of jobs, employers may be seeking whether or not work authorization is required, the job titles themselves. And if you choose to follow that organization, you'll get additional announcements from Handshake even after the fair. So if they post an event, an additional job, you'll, you'll get a notification. This is a really helpful feature to remember so that it's a great for top employers. I don't know that you necessarily want to be clogging your inbox with those that may just be mediocre employers of interest, but certainly those that are of keen interest, this is a great tool to use so that you can be sure not to miss any announcements or engagement opportunities with pen related events through Handshake. 
So once you start following organizations, or even if you aren't following them, if you go to their employer page, which you can find under the employer tab and search for the employer, so in this case, Cornerstone Research, you can go onto their employer page. And on the employer page, you will find a wealth of information often, especially for larger employers, including things like reviews put forth, not just by Penn students, but again, students from the thousand plus schools where Handshake is used, information on interviews or the kinds of questions that were asked or what the process was like for interviewing, which can all be excellent fodder for preparing for career fairs and understanding what kinds of qualities or uh, key things may be of great importance for this particular employer. One of the other things that's going to be available on the employer page is which students have worked there. So you can click on that and filter by, when you say see all, you can then go on to filter for students that are specifically from the University of Pennsylvania, and then you can even message them through Handshake to get in touch with folks who may have interned there previously or recent grads who may you know, be working there now. And having conversations with those folks can provide you with additional insights into the organization. Whether or not you have time to do that before the fair may not necessarily be an option, but these are good conversations that you may want to have after the fair or leading into applications that you may be preparing. We mentioned that vault guides can be another excellent way to find out information both about specific companies and industries as a whole. Vault offers everything from company guides to larger industry guides, specific guides on jobs and interviewing advice. Uh, all these guides are written by people who work in those industries, but from a perspective for readers who are not familiar with the industries. So they're, they're easy to follow. And each guide includes usually information on entry points, a day in the life, top employers, and even some interview questions for first round interviews, a wide range of, of industries. And they can be found on our Career Services website under Communities. And you can just also search for, for Vault and access them that way. Lippincott Library is an underutilized resource at Penn. And if you really want to go the extra mile for research on employers for career fairs or for interviews that you're preparing for after you've connected with somebody at a career fair, if it turns into uh, that next step, this is where you can find access to all sorts of of information on company reports. Lippincott Library is not just available to Wharton students. That is a, a myth. Any, any student at Penn can access Lippincott. And if you go to this homepage, you start by clicking on the business research guides. And then from there, you go down to career information, which will take you then to this next page which is just a cornucopia of additional information that could be helpful. At the tabs at the top, you can see you have access to information on specific companies, industries, and, and really there are so many additional resources. It's so much, in fact, that I recommend that you even reach out to one of the Lippincott librarians. There's a uh, tab at the bottom left for you to ask for help and type in a question. They have a series of workshops that are going on even this fall. You can reach out to one of their business librarians to ask questions. Uh, they are all really helpful and happy to assist you with any endeavors that you have. As I said, in particular, this is helpful as you prepare for specific interviews. And again, they have resources on everything from you know, big companies, uh, great resources for things in startups, um, on healthcare, on finance, on consulting, on uh, just a whole range of information that is useful. So I encourage you to reach out to them. Now, moving on to the day of the fair itself, after you've prepared yourself with all of this research that you've done, as Anne mentioned, you want to consider your schedule carefully. We recommend that if possible, you avoid back-to-back -back sessions and really take advantage of those group sessions, particularly if the one-on-one -on -one opportunities are, are either all booked or just may not be available with your schedule. Uh, appropriate space, lighting, you know, having a quiet uh, background, all of these things are really important. And as, as Anne mentioned, having the appropriate technical specifications are also important. Semi-professional attire, all those things that you want to have in place to create a good impression. In terms of accessing your schedule, when we did our practice career fair, we noticed that some students found this confusing. So we want to make sure that we, we reiterate here. 
when you log in, you'll see three tabs, available sessions, your sessions, and career fair details. Your schedule is going to be under the Your Sessions tab, where you will see any group sessions and one-on-one -on -one sessions that you have signed up for. And instead of RSVP'd on the day of, it, that, that button will turn blue and it will just say Join. In your one-on-one -on -one sessions, obviously you want to be mindful of time. So be on time just like you would in a regular meeting, professional meeting that you would have face-to-face. You want to introduce yourself. Sometimes these Zoom sessions can be awkward and people just appear on a screen. So have a friendly introduction available. We have a great resource on our website as part of our um, online workshops that has to do with networking. You can check that out in our networking community that's all about the elevator pitch. That will work really well for this career fair setting as well. You just need to be able to introduce yourself quickly in a minute or two. Smile, have good eye contact. In the picture here, you can see the difference between maintaining good eye contact, which in a virtual setting requires you looking at the camera and not at the screen as our colleague Michael was doing in our practice staff session. Because when you look at the person on the screen, it creates the impression of looking below you. Michael is also, while I love his Snoopy shirt, also, even though it's a collared shirt, that's probably not the most professional outfit to go for in this session. So again, as, as Anne pointed out, you know, dust off your, your nicer professional clothing for these sessions to create a good impression. You wanna ask informed questions from that research that you've done. We also have a great set of informational interview questions and a guide on our networking portion of our website, which you can refer to. And lastly, be sure that you're monitoring your time. There's no countdown clock on, uh, in these one-on-one -on -one sessions. And while it should be up to the recruiter to monitor your time, don't leave it to them to do that. Uh, be mindful of that 10 minutes. And when it's close to up, wrap it up on your own. Also make note of the person's name. Uh, you do wanna be prepared to follow up with a thank you note within 24 hours and jot down notes after the session, not during, so that you can make that note personalized. You can use our, our subscription to CareerShift to look up that person's contact information if it isn't provided to you during the one-on-one -on -one session. Other technical considerations. Uh, Handshake does not seem to like Safari. We've had several issues with people using Safari. In particular, that issue is that other people can hear you, but you cannot hear them. So definitely use one of the preferred browsers of Chrome or Firefox. Chrome in particular seems to work well. Have a link to your resume ready for one-on-one -on -one meetings as Anne recommended at the beginning, you know, whether that's a link to a Google Doc or if you wanna use your Box account from Penn. It's just a good idea to be prepared to share your accomplishments with the employers and be aware of the sound settings. Note that for one-on-one -on -one meetings, you will join those meetings with the mute button preset to be on. So you need to turn off your mute button when you, when you join those one-on-one -on -one sessions. The mute button should also be set automatically for group sessions of more than 15 people. If for some reason your schedule needs to change and you're not gonna make a one-on-one -on -one session, please be sure that you, you cancel that. Uh, you can do that up to 10 minutes before your meeting. It's definitely a better idea to give someone a heads up that you won't be able to make the meeting with a, with a quick message, which Handshake will prompt you to write, rather than be a no-show, which could damage your professional reputation. And you can join group sessions anytime they are in session. So again, you, you don't have to plan that as much in advance. If your schedule changes or your interests change, you can just feel free to join away. So we appreciate you joining us for our career fair tips. That sort of wraps it up. The only other thing we wanted to make sure that you note is that it's a very busy time of year for us in career services. And while we are eager to answer all of your questions and we know that those questions are pressing and important, it, we also know that it's tough to get an appointment with us. Please remember that we put in appointment time slots and handshake at the beginning of each week, usually on Monday mornings. If you are still having trouble finding a time, that is why we have same day drop-ins, Monday through Friday. Same day drop-ins become available, those signups go live at 9.15 each morning. So if you are having trouble finding an appointment, please take advantage of those and check the website for listings for your school. Thanks again for joining us and we look forward to engaging with you this career fair season.